OK. What does all of this mean? Well, one of the things uh, that the real estate community has concluded here is that a 30-day closing is probably not really realistic after October 3rd, 2015. Why? Well, we've got a lot to learn. The lending community has a lot to learn. And if there are any delays, if there are any redisclosures, if there is any type of problem, you don't want, until the forms are changed to reflect and deal with those type of problems, you don't want to run up under your closing date. So it's been suggested and it's been advisable to add an additional 15 days um, to your closing date. So 45 days out, maybe even 60, depending on the lender that they're using. Now, I know there's lenders out there. I know they are. I tell you, don't worry about me. I'll get it done in 20 days. I can get it done in 25, 30 days. And that's fantastic. But I, you need to give yourself a buffer. You need that 45 days in there. And if you close in 25, that's fantastic. Nobody says you can't close earlier than the closing date. But you don't want to run up to the wire and get caught and have a problem with the lender. And since this is all so new for everybody, for the lender, for the title companies, for the real estate agents, for the consumers. Remember, the consumers don't know any of this. You're much more on top of it than all your consumers out there. Because you're going to have a consumer come up to you and go, don't worry about me. I've closed bought plenty of houses in my life. I think I know the process. And they're going to be smug, and they're going to think they know what's going on. And you're going to have to say, no, you don't know the process. I don't care if you bought a house in May. You don't know the process. The process has changed. And you have to be the ones who help educate them and guide them through this, because they're going to think they know what they're doing, and they're not. We talked earlier. They're not going to jump when the lender says jump. They're going to think they can leave for their cruise and give the power of attorney to the brother. The seller is going to think, yes, I've got a contract. I'm out of here in 30 days. And that may not be the case anymore. So you've got to set the appropriate expectations with them and let them know that it, it is different. It is a different than it's ever been before. Um, and so it is important to, to communicate with the lender and the closing agent and determine a realistic time frame to close this deal. And they may say 20 days is fine, but as we stand today, no one's closed a single deal in the, United, in the whole state of Texas, no one's closed a single deal under these rules. So we don't know if 20 days can really be done. So don't, you know, don't back yourself into a corner. In addition, back-to-back -back contracts, probably not such a good idea right now. You may need, you need to put yourself, again, a buffer zone between those back-to-back -back contracts. Because if you're back-to-back -back and something happens here, maybe through absolutely no fault, of your borrower, the APR is miscalculated, uh, the lender didn't understand the forms, did something wrong, has to redo it, because this is all so new, and through no fault of your, your buyers, we've got an extension, you've got a back-to-back -back contract, we've got a problem. So built-in buffer zones here on back-to-back -back contracts is a good idea.